to European Rugby, the Challenge Cup Cardiff against Sale on what promises to be a very emotional evening. The club is in mourning after the passing of its father figure. Peter Thomas was a former player, chairman and was the life president and probably more importantly a huge benefactor, a man who kept this club alive for two decades and more. He passed away sadly at the age of 79 earlier in the week and before we get this match underway we will be pausing to reflect on his life out on the arms park field in front of me there are around a hundred or so individuals members of peter thomas's family former greats of this club and they all await the arrival of the players on the field bbc wales sports rugby writer gareth griffiths joins me we're awaiting nick williams actually the former cardiff man will be a member of our commentary team but uh, he's on the field actually gareth and um, despite the fact that we're listening to metallica at this point in time i think this the next five ten minutes may well be very 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 emotional here it's quite a scene isn't it i wasn't expecting this they said the family were here but i wasn't expecting the, you know the whole the, the whole family and members of the club to be here they were they're from 22 to 22 they're in three rows you've got the main family on the halfway line with uh, with some of the committee members as well and i think and then you've got like the back staff behind them um yeah as you say there must be about 100 people here waiting to pay tribute to as you say the person who's really kept this club you know he is Mr Cardiff isn't he you know he's been there for half a century in so many different roles there'll be some people listening of course to sales supporters who may not necessarily know how important a figure Peter Thomas has been because we often reflect and pass on the life of former presidents or individuals who have been extremely influential on sporting organizations but the the effect of this man on this particular side has been ginormous. It has, and it goes by, I mean, Cardiff Region came in 20 years ago, 2003, but it goes before that when it was the Cardiff club side. You know, it's not just, it's not just been a benefactor, it's just the, the whole, he, he, he's, he, he's become his life, you know, everything, every, everybody, all the players have always been grateful. It's not just that, the, you know, he obviously had the money that he put in, but if you speak to all the players, he, he's treated them as part of his family, he's brought players over from 12,000 miles away, they've um, you know they've come in and he's always been asked after them you've heard the stories this week of former players just saying you know he'd he, he, he wing them up just to see how they were going and just to see how they were doing and you know, this club this place as well the arms park is synonymous with Peter Thomas in the last two years he has been knocked dead in the range of nine to ten million pounds and we are waiting the arrivals of the players and there is a match to be played as well, Gareth, on what's been an extremely busy weekend of international and European club rugby. There has, yes. This this will be the third game that the regions are involved in in the last 16. Uh, the Scarlets had a uh, tight win last night over Breve in the Challenge Cup last 16, and they will now face Clermont next weekend in the quarterfinal. And the Dragons have been uh, soundly beaten today up in by Glasgow. So their their uh, competition, uh, the European competition, comes to an end there now. So this is this is the final game of today. Um, we know uh, with the results earlier on that Benetton beats Connaught. So we know that now know that the winners of this game will go away to Benetton next week uh, in the quarterfinals. Earlier, France won by 53 points to three, the women's six nations. Wales have just beaten Scotland, that was live on Radio Wales, 34 points to 22. In the Champions Cup, wins for Sharks, against Munster Stormers, La Rochelle, Leinster, and in the Challenge Cup. Toulon, Benetton, Lyon, Glasgow and Rasek 92. Both sides enter the field of play. Cardiff in their traditional blue and black. Sail in their away colour, colours of dark red. And before this match gets underway, we will pause and reflect the life and the legacy of the great Peter Thomas and the scene in front of me the whole of the playing squad of Cardiff are all out there in one row behind the players and the referees members of Peter Thomas's family including young children die young 
the Cardiff head coach is there on the halfway line. Okay, and another we lost two dozen, is it not 50 odd dignitaries cover the pitch? Well, it's it's pause. To 22 years as a chairman, and always been our life president. Peter's contribution over six decades has been immeasurable. It is safe to say that we're not Peter Thomas, we would not have a club today. Everyone at the Arms Park and the wider rugby world is deeply saddened by the passing of Peter. We are joined today by Peter's wife, Babs, his four children, Holly, Debs, Steph, and Rod, and the family who actually joined us in a minute of silence, followed by minutes of applause in recognition of Peter's vast contribution and celebration of his life. in dark colours, some in suits, others in the sporting regalia of Cardiff Rugby. I'm not sure I've seen anything quite like that, Gareth. No, I haven't, and I, I wasn't quite expecting that. I knew we were going to be there was going to be a commemoration, but not to that degree. And as you said, when a, you can see the, the blue, the blue and uh, black ties of Cardiff on all the, the sort of dignitaries there, and it, it's you know it's still going on now. So it'll be interesting to see how the players react to that because that's very emotional, and players are trying to try and be quite close to the, the boat beforehand. So it'll be interesting to see how they react to that and whether they take that as a positive or they get a bit of overwhelmed in the first five ten minutes. Well, in particular, sail players. As well because by definition they would not have had an emotional attachment to Peter Thomas and it's unlikely they would have faced any similar situation in the past. Yeah, no, I mean that is that is that was certainly a one-off, and it, it was very special for anybody who, who was lucky enough here to witness what what went on, and uh, it just shows the mark of how highly Peter Thomas was respected in these parts. The voice of Gareth Griffiths. I'm Gareth Rees Owen. This is Five, Five Sports Extra, BBC Sport Online, and it's showtime at the Arms Park. I will be joined by Nick Williams shortly, but we are ready to get underway here on what's a glorious evening in the Welsh capital. George Ford with a deep kick into the 22. And it's gathered by Josh Turnbull. Timani, the big lock, driven back into the tackle, lost 10 metres, ball in hand, and he's 15 metres out from his own try line. Thomas Williams assumes responsibility and will clear the pressure. First minute of this Challenge Cup knockout match between Sale and Cardiff and Timani with 30 seconds on the clock is on the floor clutching his head and in some severe pain so the winners of this match 
to face Benetton in the last eight Benetton who beat Connacht by 41 points to 19 here are the two sides for you this evening Cardiff have Fries Priestland at full back Owen Lane and Josh Adams explosive wingers Mason Grady and Max Llewellyn two young centres Jared Evans and Thomas Williams 9 and 10 Domachowski, Belcher and Azarati the front row Timani and Teddy Williams the back row of Josh Turnbull, James Botham and Talupe Falatau the visitors well it's Joe Carpenter at fullback Tom Hoflaherty and Tom Roebuck on the wings the dynamic powerful destructive partnership of Rob Dupree and Manu Tuilangi in midfield George Ford and Gus Moore, Bevan Rod, Akamanda Verver, Nick Shonard, Jean-Luc Dupree and Johnny Hill the locks John Ross, Ben Curry and Dan Dupree if you're just joining us on BBC Sport online and 5 Sports Extra we are in the opening minute and the giant Cardiff lock Lopetti Timani has received some running repairs and his, is back on his feet off the top ball for sale Tuilangi, George Ford to the back door little dab through kick and chase there was the kick by Carpenter Roebuck gave chase but the ball beat everybody and crept over the near touchline to us and Cardiff will go immediately and they go deep risky play and it's caught by Ben Curry and Curry is a metre short poor option from Cardiff now sale pick and go minute and a half on the clock they give it some width Ford Dupria floats it out not the best of passes but it's taken by Oflati still sale come there's a Cardiff player down might still be Tamani on the far touchline sale two minutes played looking for the first score they go down the short side they're within centimeters the referee blows his whistle but we will be coming back for advantage meanwhile Timani is still down and surely his evening is over two minutes play European knockout rugby live on BBC Sport Online and 5 Sports Extra and the Wetty Timani departs and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by former Cardiff and great Mick Williams uh, sad to see Timani leave the field but just a quick word on what happened pre-match on the pitch that was rather special Nick yeah absolutely powerful um, hello to everyone sorry uh, I was just down on the field with uh, past players uh, and family members and current players just out paying their respects to, to Peter Thomas so it was, uh, it was absolutely amazing to be a part of Van der Merwe will take a quick tap and he drives towards the Cardiff try line he's offloaded it to his fellow forwards now it's sacked in a pile and that large roar tells you that Cardiff managed to repel a tackle which turned into a driving wall and it was Josh Turnbull who rose triumphantly from the bottom of the heap to secure the Cardiff scrum yeah great great play there from the skipper Joshy Mr Reliable um, and you can see that the way Sale have come you know come to play you know they've, they've tried to come and uh, dominate the boys you now especially with their big boys up front with the, with the Demervers and the, and the Duprees you know that's that's what they're going to try and do is, is try and intimidate the boys but a uh, good start so far so happy to see Josh leading the way It's an old cliche. Sailor a beefy pack, heck, aren't they? Sailor, it's a, they're a big pack, aren't they? They're big boys. <laughs> yeah, they've always been big boys. The boys up uh, up north, so they'll try and dominate. Oh, great, great, great scrum there. 
that's a big booster there with the boys getting the free kick, especially with Corey Dahm and, and Azarati, you know, coming off last week's good performance for them to get a nice free kick against the boys up front there. Luke Ramos, the French referee, gives a free kick. And Reese Priest then. <laughs> Torpedo styles. Style hammers it away and gets the player to the halfway line and we get a good look right in front of us in the south stand recently renamed the Peter Thomas south stand as Bakke van der Merwe it's Dupria one of three Duprias on the field all brothers two of them twins Tuing Lange crashes into midfield over the gain line Van der Merwe with a carry as well, such a dynamic man is the South African hooker. They keep going the same way, 10 yard line, brilliant play of Flaherty, he's through over the 22. It's all sail in the opening five minutes and they get quick ball. Dupria with a carry, some big tackles going in. Thomas Young forced to make big hits, again there's a big charge in midfield and it's such quick possession for Curry Carpenter Carpenter up to the hop try line driven back in the tackle and he spilt the ball Cardiff get away with it but well, that was outstanding rugby yeah. by Sale that deserved so much more absolutely there great 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 defence there in the end there by but Tomas and, and Josh Adams but you can just see God, just, just how dominant you know the forwards for Sale are you know they're just getting over the line with such ease and you know, the boys need to need to bar up there. But a bit of old school toughness needs to come about. Ball given back to Dupria over the ten yard line. Jean Luc Dupria, the lock. Manu Tuilangi, first receiver. At the back door they go again and this time it's spelt. But they carved out a numerical advantage again and Carpenter's pass wasn't that sympathetic to Dupria, Rob Dupria and he knocked it on yeah it's, again it's just too easy for the boys to get across there you know the likes of uh, Van der Merwe just uh, you know tossing up the ball there but I think Dupree was, was coming back onto, into to James Botham you know good bit of D there but it's just getting it's too easy the yardage is just way too easy and you know it's going to be a long long 75 minutes or whatever's left if, if the boys don't decide to uh, to pull finger and put in some big shots BBC Sport Online, six minutes played, yet to get a score. But Sale have been knocking on the door. It's a glorious evening in the Welsh capital. We are in the south stand. Floodlights are on. Pink, distant sky, shadowing over Westgate Street. And it's dry. It's very dry. <laughs> yeah. That's the main thing, it's dry. I think that, uh, set piece will definitely be a part here a guy where, where Sale will try and dominate and rightly so you know they're, they're second on the on the table in the premiership and, and they've been able to dominate teams like the Series and, and the Harlequins through this set piece so I'm pretty sure they'll be able to try and use that uh, against Cardiff tonight Good solid strength on Cardiff and Sale are going back and the loudest cheer of the evening goes yeah. to Corey yeah. Domachowski, Kieran Azarati and Liam Belcher, the Cardiff front row. Yeah, that was a bit of a confidence booster for the boys there. Made me eat my words, to be honest. Uh, but good, good to see that young uh, front row, you know, be dominant like that at such an early stage and try and set a good platform for Cardiff tonight. Luis Beastler is going for distance with his kick to touch and he's got his side up to the 22 so after defending for the opening seven and a half minutes and doing it resolutely Cardiff now have an opportunity to score the first points of the game Max Llewellyn crashes into midfield around the corner comes Josh Turnbull big hits from the Dupria brothers on both men 
Chalupe Falatal once again using his footwork to get himself out of trouble Priestland gets the ball to Josh Adam one on one cuts inside the pass was forward but we saw Josh Adams dance past Tom Roebuck there unfortunately and sadly for him and his side the pass was forward yeah a bit of a bit of a mistake there from from Priestland just their last pass going going forward to Josh Adams uh, but good to see what, what Cardiff are trying to do tonight, trying to move that ball. Probably understand that uh, physically they won't be able to, to match the boys from up north. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll try and uh, run rings around them rather than try and run through them. We just need to keep an eye on the kicking game as well. Talk to perhaps Cardiff for this match. Might keep the ball alive, kick further, deeper. The trend in rugby these days is to kick to compete. To a certain degree leads to a quagmire, a battle of forces, another scrum penalty to Cardiff. Well, one thing is going their way, and when you look at the bench for Cardiff, when you have Christian Dacey, Rhys Carey, and Dylan Lewis, all Wales internationals, Domachowski, Belgian, Azarati are far less heralded, but they fronted up well in Zebra last weekend and they've been given their chance. Yeah, and, and, and rightly so, guys. You know, they. These, these young boys are, you know, as you said, they've been given their second chance. So it's a bit of a confidence booster from from Dai Young. Um, but when when you say looking at that pack with the likes of Daisy, Kari, and Lewis, you know, they're, they're creeping up behind them. So they're definitely making a mark, and they're making a mark nice and early tonight. Voice of former Cardiff man, Nick Williams. Five Sports Extra, BBC Sport Online. We're approaching the 10th minute and Jared Evans has a go to get the first points on the board. Struck it well. Struck it ever so well. 3-0. 10 minutes played. Yeah, good, good start there from Cardiff. Been able to negate their first initial onslaught from the, the big boys up north of Sale. I've um, been getting three points on the board, but uh, you know Sale will be up for it now, I'm trying to get this ball back on the on the kickoff. Recipient from the kickoff. He's lost possession. We've got a penalty. Yeah, I, th I think there was a bit of a harsh one there, to be honest, Gar. Uh, I think he ripped it and while he was still up, but he's, he's called he's called he's called Ben Curry there for, for for not releasing. So, bit of a harsh one. Uh, at the moment, it seems referee uh, Luke Ramos from uh, France is uh, is covering the card of boys, uh, but I'm sure the Sale boys will definitely be up for it and uh, and looking for a stronger fight. Well, these priests have just stuck some boosters in to his boots today because he's getting real flight on his kicks. Max Llewellyn comes on that inside line as he's been doing for the past few months. Cardiff have possession, they're in sale half. Referee got in the way a little bit, that didn't stop Talupe Falatel. Takes four men to drag him down. D big hit to Jared Evans. Late by Hill, but it's turnover ball. And Sale are playing rugby, but it's turnover to Falatel, but he was knocked on. This is a good game, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. You can see, you can see Sale have definitely done their homework. Uh, Cardiff always use that second man play, and uh, you got none better than, than Jared Evans in the backfield. But big Johnny Hill comes up with a with a hell of a shot. I think it was it was yeah, I think it was bang on, good timing there. Um, so again, they're trying to dominate Jared, being being quite quite a young fella, uh, with these these big forwards from from Sale trying to trying to get one over him. But uh, so far, so good. Great Jared, game, Jared Evans. Another who will be leaving Cardiff. So many players departing come the end of the season. Heavily linked with Harlequins. We know the Max Dwellin is on his way to Gloucester. Speaking of Harlequins, they lost to the Stormers in the Champions Cup by 32 points to 28 Sharks. Beat Munster by 50 to 35. What a game between La Rochelle and Gloucester. Gloucester could have stolen it at the death. But a last-minute try by Teddy Thomas 
give La Rochelle the victory by 29 points to 26. And Leinster, unsurprisingly, beat Ulster by 30 points to 15. Meanwhile, penalty, this time at scrum time, to sail. Challenge Cup, Toulon 36, Cheetahs 21. Benetton, 41, Connacht 19. And it'll be Benetton who will welcome the winners from this match next Saturday, 3 p.m. Star Francais, 24, Lyon, 41. Glasgow Warriors, 70 points on the Dragons, 73 points to 33. And the Lions beat Racing. Manu Tuilangi, direct carry from him. Dead smack centre of the field. Van der Merwe, Akio Van der Merwe, driven back in a tackle and Cardiff compete on the floor. War chips it over into the red zone. Priestland playing with fire a little bit. That's a counter attack. Mason Grady is away. He's got Josh Adam, needs to use him, doesn't, and he's dragged down. Now, this was a very strange incident because the, the assistant referee stuck his flag up to denote that the ball had gone over the, the player had gone over the touchline. Then he changed his mind, so some of the sail players stopped, which gave Mason Grady an opportunity to counter attack. Thankfully, from a sail perspective, it led to nothing in the end, and in fact they get a penalty and they'll get a chance to go back to exactly where they were. I don't know if you checked that, Nick, did you? Yeah, I think I think it's been a mis miscommunications here from, from, from the touchy and, 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 and Luke Ramos here from France. But, uh, you know, it would, it would have been interesting had, had Cardiff gone all the way there, but uh, like you said, the sail got the penalty and now they're back in the five. 15 minutes play. Five Sports Extra, BBC Sport Online. Cardiff 3, sail nil. Sale looking to put a squeeze. They have an attacking line out five meters out. Dupria takes, hits the ground, sets it back. Aki van der Merwe, brother of Duan van der Merwe, picks up, goes, twists, turns, drives, gets over the try line. And there was no stopping Aki van der Merwe from five meters out. He crashed into four Cardiff defenders. But it was the powerful South African hooker who gets the first try of this match. Cardiff 3, Sale 5, Nick Williams tries stopping Manda Merva. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a scary sight, isn't it? And I'm sure I'm sure Josh Adam was uh, shaking in his boots there. But, um, you know, we all know how, how strong his brother is. But, you know, he's a bit more compact, I think he is. But he he, he has a bit more bite as uh, the Zucker van der Merva. And he, he definitely made the most of... Uh, of the big boys running up against the, the skinnies. Yeah, if you think of uh, Duan van der Merwe, the Scotland international, as a race source, this guy's a bit more of a Rottweiler. I think they gave him the nickname uh, the Warthog. <laughs> well, it, it, it suits. Yeah, it? no, it's uh, down to a T, so... It looks like he's been... Wa someone's winded him up on his back <laughs> yeah. and let him go because yeah. he accelerates so quickly into yeah. the tackle crashes into it. I mean, he had no right to score that try. Well, and now George Ford has an opportunity to add the extras, which he does. And we play 70 minutes here in Cardiff. And it's the Sale power game that's taken them into the lead. Sale 7, Cardiff 3. Yeah, Sale, Sale will be happy with that guy. They, they obviously come out all guns blazing in the first five minutes. Cardiff negated that. Had a bit of a purple patch themselves. And then now uh, they've been able to get back up and leading the score there, seven points to three. If you're just joining us, we had a very emotional tribute to Peter Thomas, the former Cardiff president, pretty much. Nick Williams was alongside me, among dozens of dignitaries, former players. Who was there with you, Nick, in terms of former players? Who, who did you recognise out there? Uh, it was uh, Nicky, Nicky Robinson, Reese Williams, Nugget was there. So there was, there was, there was a few familiar Martin faces there, yeah. A really, really touching tribute it was, and, and for, for an amazing man that Peter was. Kick to compete, what sale goes for. Now they go with the acceleration and defence, so Liam Belcher crosses the half line, cuts back in. Reese Priestland goes for the bomb. This one, slightly overcharged. And Carpenter had a bit of time to catch, set, and get some support. So. 
10 metres in to Priya coming out of his own 22 with a carry three to Priya's on the field Jean-Luc and Dan in the forwards twins Rob in the centre War again they look to compete and this kick is taken by Falatau uh, dropped the ball and Teddy Williams was in front of him accidental offside penalty to sale just inside their own half and they will clearly look to drill this down thanks to George Ford into Cardiff territory absolutely again it's a textbook there from from sale they're not going anywhere on the, on the attack so they, they put up a you know a bit of a Gary Owen as, as they know competed for the ball and unfortunately got a penalty there now with with George Ford they probably put it in the corner or near or there or thereabouts and now like always oh no sorry he hasn't got it through and Freeston's got it there now well mistake George Ford and now they get an opportunity to counter attack from Priestler's kick and attempted 50-22 straight down the throat to Jared Evans he spots a gap but Ford has covered it so kick tennis here Ford in his own on his own 10 yard line hangs it up high to test Priestland he's got plenty of time and now he's away wearing 15 Priestland dancing through three defenders breaks the line Thomas Williams looks to go blind referees in the way floats it out to Grady Grady pass forward cross the ball for Josh Adams and again Grady ignores him keeps it alive and Thomas Young somehow gets possession for Max Llewellyn Young five meters short Cardiff ball high tackle penalty advantage has been played off the charge is Corey Domachowski and he crashes over the try line and with 20 minutes on the clock Cardiff are back in the lead and it's Domachowski like knife through butter huge acceleration and it's his try which brings the home side back in front outstanding play there from, from the boys we thought it was all gone after Mason Grady wasn't able to find Josh Adams and then just managed to turn the ball back over and I think Corey Dom hit a beauty of a line Corey Domachowski hitting a beauty of a line and just slicing through like Gar said knife to butter again the only question for me um, whether or not Mason Grady was over the touchline and when he got that pass away surely they'll be checking this with the TMO but Tom Achowski, he must have had a what 30 yard run up yeah. before that pass came to him but again it's, it's, it's a great vision from Tomas Williams he had about three four different runners and for him to choose out Corey Domachowski you know just goes to show how, how far on Tomas Williams has come uh, regarding his, uh, his, his halfback position as we see Jared Evans had the extra two going up to the DMO John, William, uh, John Evans gets the conversion referee's been pulled up here again it's this AR assistant referee to my mind I wasn't sure whether Mason Grady had been dragged over the near touchline to us yeah I think to the to the naked eye it, it did look like he was uh, he was over the line well, to me anyway um, but gone are the days when you could take the, the quick conversion and they couldn't look at the AR uh, Whereas now it's uh, the rules are kind of changing and, and that's what the referees are looking at the moment. We don't have ref mic, unfortunately. And the screen is a long way away. So Luke Ramos is stood directly beneath it, waiting some assistance from Patrick Delac. Yeah, and we look back and it's surely Mason Grady's legs are over the touchline now let's watch this again he charges into the defender gets tackled gets it away where are his legs Ooh. split seconds split seconds here what's the call from the referee he's in deep discussion with his video assistant sale players seem to think this is a try try given 10 3 to 10 points to 7 then now we're into the second quarter of this match yeah cracking cracking quarter so far Gar. um you know it's always it's good tip for toe it is kind of have a purple patch sale have a purple patch so uh you know the first 20 minutes if it's if it's what the game is to go by it'll be a cracker of, uh, of the next 60 minutes yeah it's been good fun here 
on Five Sports Extra, BBC Sport Online. Certainly a, contra a contrast between two styles. Ambition showed by both George Ford. That one was hanging in the air for a long time. On the halfway line, his side behind by three points. Cannot overstate how glorious an evening it is to play rugby. Not too breezy, considering that horrible wind that comes off the tap usually in Cardiff. That minor breeze in Cardiff's faces, but it's negligible really in terms of the effect we'll have on the game. We could both be if we wanted in what? Shirts? We don't really need a coat, is that nice tonight? So I'm, I'm from the Pacific Islands, Carl, mate. I always need to be in a coat. <laughs> Palata dancing at a tackle. When he's on form, he is simply glorious. Imperious player. Milch threaded kick by Janet Evans. Where does that go? It's banged away by War. And now he's pleased has possession and all the sale players are offside. This game is as loose as they come, to be fair. And Priestland hasn't gone for touch. Again, we note that this is a deliberate ploy. Cardiff retained possession. Fallot out, ball in one hand. Jukes NFL style into the tackle. Jared Evans cross field kick. Josh Adams to compete against Rob Dupria. Do Rob Dupria underneath it on his own 10 meter line. 23 minutes play, 10 7. The Cardiff lead. Sale certainly have the power through the Dupree boys. And then off the ball, Bevan Rod cleans out Thomas Williams who was just a bystander at the rack and the clearest of penalties just in case the referee missed it the south stand noted it and penalty given yeah that's a, that's a bit of a coach killer that is you know a great, stuffed by yeah ben great carry there by, by dan dupree but like you said bevan bevan rod came in and he probably probably made it worse because he took out tomas williams um and, and you know, he went. I think he went two, three meters past the ruck. So it was inevitable that that ref, Luke Ramas, was was going to give a whistle. So you know, a bit of daft play, like you said. So, but uh, I'm sure. Well, hopefully, they, he, he learns for it because when Sale get on the pump, you know, they're they're, they're pretty unstoppable. But again, like, like stupid mistakes like that, uh, like I said, will be a bit of a coach killer. Yeah. Dan Dupria, the eight. Such a workhorse when he accelerated the contact really tough to bring down we've already mentioned Aki van der Merwe and the South African contingent Sean Hurt, of course the three Dupria boys John Ross who's now in his sixth season with Sale in the meantime who's down with Cardiff it's Liam Belcher I think yep I'll tell you one thing though, the, the admission ticket alone is uh, is just to watch Talupe Falatel versus uh, Dan Dupria. And at the moment, you know, it's only 25 minutes in, but, uh, you know, Dan's coming from, from all corners of the field, and then Talupe comes from his corner of the field, and it's been absolutely outstanding. A bit, bit of a frivolous game at the moment, but uh, if, it, if it stays this way, you know, you could, uh, you know, it'd probably suit Cardiff more than the set piece that it's all uh, Again, Cardiff go for off the top ball to Belcher and then Max Llewellyn cuts back in on the inside centre channel and they were waiting from that time anyway back to Faletau and Dupria Faletau in terms of footwork is unrivaled I think 100% with forwards in international rugby and he's just displaying it here this evening but at the same time Dupria it's all guts and glory. You know what's coming. Just try stopping it. Yeah, it's it's almost Beauty and the Beast like, isn't it? It's it's, it's, it's <laughs> you know total opposites. But uh, you know Talope Falatel, we all know how 
how great a player we know we, we, we all know how great both both players that they are but in their own rights and it's just magical to see and now uh, and i'm pretty happy i'm not playing anymore because i don't want to be playing against these boys that's for sure are you been all right with to priya wouldn't you uh, no yeah i think i think I probably would have preferred the way he plays as more direct, so it's no, less so running yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with Salupe, he takes a scenic route to the trial line, and uh, I'll leave that to the seven and the six. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. If you, what were you with your fight? What's your fighting weight? Oh, it was kicks. About 130 when I was playing up here. What's that in old school? Stones. 20. One? 21? Yeah. 21 stone. I'll take 21. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Back, you back yourself in most contact yeah. situations when yeah. you're 21 stone. Right? I, I think when you're on the field, <laughs> when you're on the field, it, no one's weight counts. It's just, just a matter of uh, how big the ticker is. You say that, Nick. It's easier to say that when you're 21 <laughs> stone. Here goes to Priya. Peels off the back of the scrum and then offloads to Roba. His side are behind by three points and we're into the second quarter Ake van der Merwe score of the first try here Cardiff and Say looking for an away trip to Benetton in the Challenge Cup quarter final a week today 3pm Benetton beats Connor Chris Priest then offloads it at Josh Adams on the halfway line Spear tackled into the ground by Ben Curry, the ref has a quick word with him, and nothing more. Yeah, again, it's, it's again I said, Coach Kuller, it? you know, Bevan Rod with the cleanouts, and then you know the skipper and, and Ben Curry. I mean, the tackle was complete. No, I don't think it was. Uh, no, it wasn't malice, but it just wasn't necessary. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that Luke Ramos is, uh, is is drawing the line there for both teams. That there's no silly play. And just letting the game flow like it has been, because it's been uh, it's been a, it's been a game and a half. Comfortable victory for France in the Six Nations this afternoon. 53 points to three against Ireland, Scotland, just edged out by Wales. 34 points to 22, but it was closer than that. Wales scoring a very late try to seal the victory and secure a second win Josh Adams another high kick by War caught well Azarati pump fake by him into Luke Dupria Jared Evans Thomas Young Cardiff possession on the halfway line 10-7 the score lateral play eventually gets to Owen Lane who sticks his foot in the accelerator for Cardiff I've gone completely across field, I made no ground yet. Foul it out. Ball in two hands, which makes it so tricky for the defender to fix itself. Evans, flat pass. It's a good pass as well. Azarati testing the defence. Turnover ball, say sail. Turnover ball. It is, I think. Yeah, yeah. Penalty was coming. Yeah, great, great play there from the skipper, uh, Ben Curry. I think he might have uh, he might have set himself right after this, this, this bit of a dark penalty down on the mid on the midfield line. Uh, but you know, once he's on the ball, you know, it's very uh, very hard to get off it there. And and Cardiff were just too slow to to, to clean out. Uh, but like you said, uh, you know, Cardiff have probably been going side to side. You can see the difference in, in the teams. Cardiff will go side to side, whereas Sale will decide to uh, to go to their strengths and they, they they'll go wide once. And then they'll just make the old caterpillar and go for the up and under and contestable kick and, and chance their luck at turning the ball over. Uh, so great play there from Sale. As we see now, uh, George Ford lining up a penalty from the 45 meter. From 45 meters out. So 45 meters, if not a little bit more, not too far from the center spot. George Ford. This may be the top of his range. Barely a runner. This one hangs high in the air. Yes. Say the assistant referees. They both had to look at each other to confirm what they all both suspected that the kick was good. 
and that will level a 10 apiece with 30 minutes played. Yeah, and I, I think 10 apiece is a fair reflection of the game. Uh, both teams are out to uh, to run the ball, which is great. Because that's what people want to see. Um, their last quarter will be a, a, a big uh, definition of how the game is going. But at the moment, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a great game to watch. I'm not sure if it's a great game to watch if you're either set of coaches because there's plenty to frustrate and um, sale exit give the ball back to Cardiff on their own 10 yard line and we'll be able to reset from here now line up ball to Belcher I think it's been a 50-50 so far with the driving mall or Max Llewellyn straight and direct back on that angle not straight from Belcher so we will not get to see what the plan was uh, that was uh, as we as we look down on the pitch Liam Belcher putting his hand up and and then and owning that that it was it was his mistake with the uh, the not not straight but again like I speak about and I have been about coach killers you know there was a prime opportunity for, for Cardiff to to strike back as we see or actually as we see sale call for the for the lineup rather than the scrum, but uh, Cardiff need to try and try and jump on those opportunities whenever Sale uh, give it to him. Front ball with Dan Dupria. They set the driving mall, and they don't get much change from Cardiff. And it's been dragged towards the touchline, so War sticks the box kick over hit Josh Adams has loads of time and then he pushes away George Ford keeps Cardiff ball Josh Turnbull crashes straight in to Dupree the wholesale back line was offside but to be fair to them they all retreated before the pass was thrown so I'm oh. sort of with the ref here but it's been turned over great on the turnover halfway there. line great turnover from Jim, James both from there this is where Cardiff are dangerous transition ball Domachowski the try scorer is isolated but he keeps possession back on the blind side they go numerical advantage to be exploited Cardiff are away Thomas Young with the acceleration like a winger there the substitute open side still Cardiff ball on the far touch line 10 apiece at Cardiff Arms Park, Teddy Williams on the 10 yard line. Great game of rugby here this evening. Jared Evans fakes, gives it to Reese Priestland. Priestland has Josh Adams. Adams for the corner will not be stopped. And that's a very stylish try by Cardiff Rugby. Patience. They took it from one side of the pitch to the other. And when the bullet needed to be fired, Jared Evans did just that. Evans to Priestland. Priestland to Josh Adams. Second try for Cardiff. Outstanding play there from, from Jared Evans. Uh -oh. Just been able to hold the ball up. Hold that ball up for an extra three seconds. As we look at the screen now, he puts through Max Llewellyn and, and, and Max gives it to Josh Adams. And we know how much speed Josh has got. So, you know, great ball there. But just goes to show that, uh, you know, with, with Jared, you know, when he holds that ball in two hands, you know, it's uh, nigh impossible to defend. Play to the line is the, is the phrase we hear being said so often. And it's not without its risk. Dan Bigger, to many people's eyes, would be someone who does the opposite, which is a sit-back quarterback style, read the game and deploy it. Jared Evans is far more instinctive, but when it pays off, it looks so good. Uh, yeah, 100%, 100%. And been lucky to play to play with Jared. You know, he's uh, just how he holds that ball up just for a millisecond. You know, it gives you as an attacker the chance to get through. And if not break the line, get your hands through and and, and, and offload. So uh, that was a great try from the boys uh, from Cardiff. Um, the last five minutes will be interesting for looking as we as we go in 15-10 uh, to Cardiff. five Josh Turnbull was scuttling across field there because that restart was dead centre on the 22 which is a rather unusual position for the ball to land Priestland 
He's been giving it some welly this evening, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got some special boots from the moon on today, so... Poor kick by Sale. Out in the full. So I don't think the assistant referee spotted that. Is he? No, I think it I think it just bounced in. Ah, okay. Maybe half a foot. Glad someone's paying attention. <laughs> well back back to Reese Priestland. He's, he's he's giving the ball a good old hoof tonight. Um, I'm not sure if there is a breeze if anything. I think it's probably going against Cardiff. So he's connecting uh boot to ball very well. Here it goes again. This one has got snow on it. And Adams jumped to compete. And it lands into the hands of Max Llewellyn. Cardiff have huge overlap out wide. Teddy Williams floats out. Falatau, great hands by him. And he gets it away, Joe in lane. What was Falatau doing out there? I don't even know how he got the pass away. Still Cardiff possession. Jared Evans in two minds gets it back to Max Llewellyn against the grain up to the 22 Sale defending Falatau picks gets it away Thomas Williams what a pass by him Cardiff through a win lane on the far side Fijian style rugby by the home team Falatau gets it away to Teddy Williams what a try yeah I think he hit the nail on the head there very very Fijian style type play but oh and it's not oh, it went forward it went forward I suppose that's fitting in yeah. a way because you can't get away with as many offloads as that yeah not. that was I mean but it's, it's, it's it was beautiful to watch though I mean but fair enough to, to, to Luke Ramos calling that I don't think he needed the AR for that but great play great interplay there from Cardiff to look at Falatau finding himself in the in the wider channels, you know, giving the ball out to Owen Lane, and just managed to get it back to Talupe with Falatau. And I think he managed to get another another offload, and uh, and that one was uh, that one was called forward. But great play, and and the crowd are definitely uh, for exciting watching tonight. Ooh. Now we've just watched that back on the replay. The South Stand claiming that that was nowhere near forward. Teddy Williams agrees. Referee having a sneaky peeky on the monitor. Fallot out on the try line. Gets it away. Nick Williams says that goes backwards. Oh, and yeah. the referee now wants to check the video evidence. Yeah. I, I think initially by looking at Fallot's motion, it's, it's, he's, he's passing backwards. But the ball seems to have, I think it's come off one of the sail defender's heads and propelled forward. So I'm not sure how he's going to call that. Falta has no right to get this one away. And the question is, does it come off his hand, or as you said, from the sail defender's head? Cardiff substitutes, rush back to the changing rooms, and we're watching the replays. Teddy Williams, there's no doubting the touchdown. The referee conversing with Josh Turnbull. No try. Okay. If you're just joining us, we played 37 minutes of a pulsating first half. Cardiff 15, Sale 10. Tough on the call. Mostly Cardiff possession. But Sale, when they get the ball, a punchy. Yeah, it's amazing. You can see definitely see the difference in, in style of both teams. You know, Cardiff are very uh, frivolous in their play. They want to hit the wide channels. But Sale played to their strengths, so they the boys up front as well as, as Manu Chuilangi just that like you said that punchy that physical type play and at the moment it seems to be complementing each other because it's it's definitely been a, a great first half of rugby BBC Wales Sport online five sports extra so far today in the Champions Cup Sharks beating Munster Stormers beating Harlequin La Rochelle beating Gloucester Leinster defeating Elster all home wins big scrum from Cardiff penalty to Cardiff, two and a half minutes left of this first half, it's another scrum penalty, 
and Tori Tomachowski screams to himself in delight. Yeah, great, great, great play there from young Corey Domachowski. Actually, the whole the whole three front row is Corey Domachowski, Liam Boucher, and Kieran Azarati. As we see Cardiff, not surprisingly, going for another going for another scrum. You know, so the Cardiff feel that they have the uh, you know their, their tails up here, um, especially going in the last two minutes of the first half. Home wins to Long Beach and Cheetahs, Benetton corner, Glasgow 73, Dragons 33, Lions beating Racing. The only away victory for Lyon in start in the Challenge Cup. And here we're into the final minute and a half, final 90 seconds of this first half. Sale 10, Cardiff 15. Two tries for Cardiff, Corey Domachowski, Josh Adams, Akka van der Merwe, the try scorer for the Sharks. So, into the last minute, Cardiff five metres, if that in from the far touchline, five metres out. Referee resets again. This is second time at the clock. So Cardiff may well want more penalties, more heat on sale, but once you hit the clock, it's red. And if the referee decides he wants a reset, well, that's the whistle for half time. Yeah, it's uh, it's important that Cardiff don't uh, they don't burn their bridges here. You know, try and try and play it smart. Interesting how they how they go about the scrum. Whether they they continue to push hard for that. For that pushover try, or you know, they got the big boys in, in the midfield and, and Max Clawellen and, and Mason Grady, but then you also got the big boys in sale and, and Manu Tulangi. So well, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just to see that Owen Lane, Jared Evans, and Max Clawellen all huddled around the scrum. Mason Grady is far deeper, the scrum goes forward, then collapses, so they have to use it. So well in on the Jamie Roberts line over the gain line, advantage coming to Cardiff clock is red final play they have a shot to nothing should they want it or maybe the referee was just showing the offside line Bevan Rod competes at the floor I think he got the turnover he did and that may be it or is it no he's playing he's playing the advantage here Gar. yeah he was it's, yeah that's very interesting we, we got sorry Cardiff got the penalty they had the advantage and they chose to they chose to play out of the scrum sometimes i think just to keep it fresh in the ref's mind just to take the advantage and, and go for another scrum and put a put a put a put a bit of pressure back on on the ref but um i think he's had a bit of a word there to to uh to the skipper to sales skipper ben curry about the the infringements down here so it'll be interesting to see uh what happens if they do go for another scrum and they do get pinged I think Cardiff are just making a decision uh, whether they're going to go for a scrum, which they do. Sorry, um, I just realised I pinched, pinched one of your chocolate players with last <laughs> permission. Sorry. Yeah, so be as, as Cardiff go for the scrum here, it'll be again they'll have their tails up. Domachowski, Belcher, and Azarati doing a stellar job up against a, I guess a, a tough, tough front rower and Rod van der Merwe and Scornitz of, of sales. So. Um, you know whether again they decide to keep the ball in or or they choose to, to fire the big boys they've they've opened up a bit of a, a blind blindside option here as we see Owen Lane standing almost on the touchline clock is red 15 points to 10 end of the first half Cardiff scrum again going forward again penalty advantage Jared Evans crossfield kick no one with Josh Adams jumps catches finishes third try for Cardiff right to the death of the first half Jared Evans to Josh Adams and they are now building a healthy lead yeah, great, great play 
stay there for Jared. And I, I must say, I mean, that is the end product of, of, of hard work from the, from the baddies up the front in Cardiff. You know, the likes of Domachowski, Belcher, Azarati put the putting on big pressure, you know, and the ref showing the advantage. And I don't know if you picked up that guy, but Jared is a, he's a right foot kicker, but he manages to put a nice little sweet left foot uh, right on the button there for Josh Adams to pick up and, and put over the try line. So great, great way for Cardiff to finish the, the half and uh, they'll be well pleased you know, going into the tunnels of halftime. So Josh Adams is second, Cardiff's third. Does this change the halftime messaging? Evans to add the conversion. Five metres in, he struck that one very well. He cheers himself. Big come on shout. He's pumped. So so in lane. And so are the Cardiff players. Had an entertaining first half. He had an emotional opening with a tribute paid to the former life president, Peter Thomas. But that conversion makes it 22 points to 10 at halftime. Quick thoughts, Nick? Yeah, great, great play there. Being able to negate the, the sale pack. We knew that they were going to come out strong. Cardiff knew they were going to come out strong. But uh, Cardiff managed to, to put more pressure on the last two minutes and eventually got two tries up. So they'll be well pleased going into the change rooms at halftime. So, halftime score. Cardiff 22, still 10. Second half commentary on the way shortly here in Cardiff. But first, this week on the Rugby Union Weekly, Sarah Orchard spoke to interim WRU boss Nigel Walker about some of the governance changes Welsh rugby clubs are voted for this week. I hope this didn't sound like hype, uh, but it's probably the most significant day in the 100-year history of the Welsh Rugby Union. If we'd not got the vote we got yesterday, um, I don't know where we would have been. We'd done some scenario planning, but it wasn't pretty. Um, and I'm just glad we haven't had to go to plan B and that plan A was overwhelmingly voted for and 97.2% of clubs uh, voting for change because we do need to change and we recognise that. Can you just give us a little bit of a flavour of what the reaction was like in the room and what was said afterwards when it was all passed through? Well, when the announcement was made and Rodri Lewis, our uh, general counsel, general secretary, uh, made the announcement, there was a spontaneous round of applause. Uh, and that gives you an indication of how um, people within the game recognise that we need to change and we need to move forward and that it's all very well talking about these things, well, we'll change tomorrow or we'll change next week or next month. Uh, people want to see change now and everybody knows the spotlight's going to be on the Welsh Rugby Union to see us implement the governance changes that we've talked about over the next nine months and then actually, um, at the same time, uh, make rugby in Wales, whichever club you play for, wherever you take part in the game, wherever you administer in the game, it's an open and inclusive and welcoming uh, place for everybody, irrespective of gender or religion, um, sexual preference, whatever it is. And just on that, I don't want to doom monger in any way, uh, Nigel, but if you hadn't have got the vote, I mean, I, I saw uh, a few of your sponsors came out and gave statements afterwards. What was actually on the line if you hadn't have got it? Uh, well, as you can imagine, over the last eight or nine weeks, I've been talking to our stakeholders, uh, which include our sponsors, on a regular basis. Um, if you're putting forward your brand and you're actually giving an organisation money to associate um, with them, if they're going through what we've been through, you begin to wonder whether it's the thing that you want to do going forward. I won't put it any more strongly than that, uh, but there was an awful lot on the line, and I'm just glad that we not reach that place where I have to go back and say, well, we will go for change, we're going to have to go back in three months' time or six months' time. Uh, the overwhelming nature of the vote is really, really reassuring. Well, look, this is a new era then for Welsh rugby. I, I think a big word, you, you tell me if I'm wrong though, is still it will take patience, whether it be you're a fan, you're a player, to see the, these changes come through. You've given yourselves a, a deadline of the 31st of December to make the governance changes. Could that happen earlier? And who is taking control of who is going to be these new leaders at the WIU? Well, as interim chief executive officer, I don't appoint to the board. Uh, that has to be uh, the chairman. 
We're going out for an independent chair, as you know. Uh, we've done some work behind the scenes in the last two or three weeks, not taking for granted the vote in any way, shape or form, but we did some preparation as you'd expect us to do. Um, we've got a long list and that long list will be scrutinized over the next uh, week or two, maybe added to. Then it will be reduced to a short list and we'd hope to identify uh, the independent chair by the end of May, beginning of June. The independent chair will then appoint the independent non-executive directors and the permanent group chief executive officer. Now, there will be a transition period. We've given ourselves the drop dead date, as you say, of 31st of December, 2023, but we're hoping we'll do it a little bit sooner uh, in the autumn. As far as seeing demonstrable change, we have been working very hard over the last 15 or 18 months uh, to make those changes, to make ourselves a more inclusive organization. The independent review, which started a month or so ago, um, will report back and they'll tell us how much of a gap we still got. But we'd expect people to see and feel that change relatively quickly in order to turn us into the organization we want to be. That's a, a three, four, five year, year job, but people should be able to see change within a relatively short period of time. Part of those changes, Nigel, I mean, you joined the WRU yourself back in 2021 as the performance director. You're the interim chief exec now. Are you going to throw your hat in the ring to be the chief exec full time or do you want to go back to being performance director? If I tell you that I've genuinely not thought about it, I've had plenty to think about over the last eight weeks. That has not been top of my list. Um, Yian and I have been at pains to, to point out it's not about one individual. It's not about the two of us as people. Yian has actively campaigned to put himself out of a job. So it, it, it's not about that. Other people will decide whether I've got anything to offer as a group chief executive officer. You said I came in as performance director. Uh, you talked about change. We've actually changed quite a bit with regard to the senior end of the game. Uh, our team, which performed brilliantly on Saturday, uh, defeating Ireland. Uh, and I know you reported on our, probably our worst moment in our international women's history when we lost at home quite emphatically to Ireland just two years ago. Crikey, what progress they've made. I remember there was another EGM right. about five years ago. Similar situations. What is going to be different this time for Welsh rugby? So this whole cycle of events doesn't just happen again. What is the difference? Uh, the difference is we've got an overwhelming mandate from the clubs. The clubs are going to hold us to account. And from top to bottom of the organisation, I walked into the office today and there was a spontaneous round of applause. Not for me, but people are relieved that we voted it through. The board, as it currently stands, is behind it. The council is behind it. The executive board is behind it. That's what's different. And we all know that we can't delay. We have to move as quickly as is humanly possible in order to deliver the change. So, Ugo, I mean, yeah, incredible stuff there from Nigel Walker. We have been here before with Wales. So before anyone gets too carried away that this is like the massive turning point, that they've actually got to do the business. But I did ask him there if he wanted the chief exec job. I think he's like danced around it. Do you think hmm. uh, he could be the chief exec permanently? I mean, what a time to come into that role. It's been crisis after crisis under the brightest light and microscope during a Six Nations period where the Welsh national team have performed really poorly. He must want the job to have done as much as he's done to get himself to a point where they can hit the reset button and hopefully every step forward is a positive step. He'd want to do it. I think him, Yian Evans has stepped down as chairman. I think that speaks volumes for his character because it's not, he, he, he just didn't want the blazer and the free trips away. He wants to provide opportunities and for those exact positions to be reflective of what the game is. I'm thrilled to hear that over 92% people voted in favour of it. I'm still 97%. scratching my head. 97%, yeah. sorry. I'm still scratching my head. What are the other 3% doing? Honestly. Well, well like, some of the votes were sent in by post. By <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's... The pigeons sure. didn't make it back. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like, come on, you, you, you'd, you'd want and hope that everyone backed it, but it is extraordinary. I think Nigel Walker has shown a, a huge amount of common sense, empathy, and to get Welsh rugby to a point where it's needed to be at this point for, for decades... He's got to take a huge amount of credit 
for that it's not just it's not just a one-man machine of course it's many many people behind the scenes they're helping it but if he does get it i hope he does have the backing to the similar extent to the people that voted for this in the first place ugo monnier chris ashton and sarah orchard they're reflecting on the welsh governance changes voted through this week in the rugby union weekly podcast the full podcast is available now on bbc sounds <laughs> The Albert Park Circuit, longitude and latitude 144.9, 5, 1, 0, 3, 5 degrees, east 37.8, 5, 0, 1 degrees, south 3.280 miles in length, 14 turns, one live race commentary from the Australian Grand Prix, Sunday morning from 5.45, on 5 Live. Sergio Perez wins from pole position in Saudi Arabia. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Five Live. The voice of sport. I'm Anthony Joshua, and tonight I'm taking on Jermaine Franklin at the O2 Arena in London. Joshua now, letting his hands go with a little bit more frequency. Oh, and here's a good right hand. Plus, you can hear previews and the build up to the fight with daily episodes of Five Live Boxing with me, Steve Bunce, on BBC Sounds. This is the fight where Anthony Joshua can really shine. Joshua v. Franklin. Tonight from 10. Hear full ringside commentary on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Break into a world of true crime on BBC Sounds with Lucy Worsley's Lady Killers. This is the story of how an ordinary woman who witnessed the killing of her husband found herself on trial for his murder. And the Lazarus heist. Soon, millions of dollars worth of banknotes are spilling out of cash points around the world. True Crime Podcasts. Listen on BBC Sounds. More live sports. Pure live sports. This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. Coming up in the next few minutes. Rugby Union. Radio 5 Sports Extra is a dedicated station for the BBC's live sport coverage. With a flexible schedule to suit the occasion. Listen using BBC Sounds. Both app and online. Plus, smart speaker, digital radio and smart TV. Radio 5 Sports Extra brings you more live commentary from the world's greatest sporting events. As Five Live broadcasts one event, BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra brings you something equally important. Uninterrupted, live and in full. And on top of the coverage you can already hear on Five Live. Coming up next on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Rugby Union. More live sport. Pure live sport. This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. More live sports. Pure live sports. This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. Coming up in the next few minutes. Rugby Union. Radio 5 Sports Extra is a dedicated station for the BBC's live sport coverage. With a flexible schedule to suit the occasion. Listen using BBC Sounds. Both app and online. Plus, smart speaker, digital radio and smart TV. Radio 5 Sports Extra brings you more live commentary from the world's greatest sporting events. As Five Live broadcasts one event, BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra brings you something equally important. Uninterrupted, live and in full. And on top of the coverage you can already hear on Five Live. Coming up next on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Rugby Union. More live sport. Pure live sport. This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. More live sports. Pure live sports. This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. Coming up in the next few minutes. Rugby Union. Radio 5 Sports Extra is a dedicated station for the BBC's live sport coverage. With a flexible schedule to suit the occasion. Listen using BBC Sounds. Both app and online. Plus, smart speaker, digital radio and smart TV. Radio 5 Sports Extra brings you more live commentary from the world's greatest sporting events. As Five Live broadcasts one event, BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra brings you something equally important. Uninterrupted, live and in full. And on top of the coverage you can already hear on Five Live. Coming up next on Radio 5 Sports Extra. Rugby Union. More live sport. Pure live sport. 
This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. More live sports. Pure live sports. This is BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. Coming up in the next few minutes. Rugby Union. Radio 5 Sports Extra is a dedicated station for the BBC's live sport coverage. With a flexible schedule to suit the occasion. Listen using BBC. Welcome back to the Arms Park, Gareth Free Show in here with Nick Williams, Five Sports Extra, BBC Wales Sport Online, second half coverage, Knockout Rugby, Challenge Cup, Cardiff 22, Sale 10, the Cardiff players are out on the field, no sign of the visitors yet, Nick Williams, what will Ben Curry be telling his players as they enter the Arms Park playing surface. Oh, I think I, I think from from Sale's perspective, they'll they'll want to try and slow the game down so they can play the game. You know, the, the, the tighter set piece type game. Because at the moment the game's very uh, get the, the game's very open, which suits Cardiff down to a T, especially on this turf. Um, but yeah, it's, it's small margins. It was five minutes in the, into their first half and uh, they scored two tries at Cardiff, so be uh, looking forward to the second half, that's for sure. Johnny Hill takes the restart, lifted high into the air and then that turns into a driving mall which rolls its way up to a sales 10 yard line. They've made 15, 20 meters. Now it stopped and paused and Sale will need to find that ball keep possession and Cardiff are all clumped together and this may well end up in a Cardiff scrum indeed it does that's the danger of the driving ball you get some momentum some rhythm you lose sight of that ball and wham bam the opposition get their hands on it sacked to the ground and it's their possession yeah, that's uh, you know, it was, it was very similar to you know to some of the options that uh, that Sale that Sale did in that first half. They had a few you know collapsed moors, so that was definitely something they'll be they'll be talking about. Just as we see, uh, Kuni Ustazen, uh he's coming on substitute. So Ustazen and McIntyre, oh, yes, both props are changed with 40 minutes 54 seconds on the clock can i ask you a question why Ooh. why not just switch them at half time what is the point of that i, I think it's i think it's the obvious guy that you know the, the refs the, the, sorry the coach coach would have said boys you need to you know give it one more crack and he's obviously seen them and he's just decided to pull them so you know sanderson's seen that and as harsh as it looks you know, it's probably the right call because but i still don't know why, why i mean they haven't had a scrum so what's but they've just literally kicked off caught caught a driving mall, driven 30 metres, taken 40 seconds of the clock, then been hooked. Yeah, I think that's why we're up here rather than up in the coaching box. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, I get your point. <laughs> I, 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 I want to know as well. No, you know, I mean, uh, I suppose there are bigger issues. Yeah, it is, good question. it is a bit of an interesting one. Like, I totally agree, should have just pulled him half time, but uh, there we are. Who's <laughs> Tyson and McIntyre are on. And they're both going backwards. So they've changed everything. They made no difference. All straight through goes Josh Adams. Chip and chase. Adams for the hat trick. Ball beats everybody. And Cardiff knew the penalty was coming. So it's offloaded to Josh Adams, who almost scored the try. And the referee goes back to the penalty. There's a case to be made that Cardiff used the advantage there. Yeah, it is. It is. It is very interesting. I think a lot of referees, uh, you know, play it differently. Um, but I think for, for Cardiff's, for Cardiff's sake, you know, Luke Ramos from France has, has decided to pull it back. Um, but the dominance, just a dominant scrum again there from from Cardiff. You know, Domachowski, Belcher, and, and Azarati definitely uh, earning their pounds tonight. You know, but on the other side, and I'm, I'm pretty surprised by this. I'm pretty surprised, you know, Sale not being as strong. It's uh, at the set piece, which is uh, something I thought that they would definitely have an upper hand on. Um, 
But like I said, Gar, mate, that's why the coaches are up the top there and, and you and I are down here eating our clears. <laughs> France 53, Ireland 3 in the Six Nations. Wales winning in Scotland. So the European Challenge Cup quarter-final. We know there'll be Toulon against Lyon. Scarlet at home to Clermont. Glasgow, who stuck 70 points in the Dragons at home to the Lions. And this will be the final quarter-final, which will be played in Benetton, 3 p.m. next Saturday. Will it be Sale or Cardiff? Rhys Priestland looking to extend Cardiff's lead. And he must have some new daps on today, because he's belting it like nobody's business. And that's Cardiff up to 25 points to 10. Three minutes played of the second half. Yeah, great, great start for Cardiff here coming out. You know, after after four or five minutes of the second half, you know, Priestman belting one over with his super boots that he's wearing tonight. So they'll be very happy with the start. I know Dai Young would be, he'll be especially happy as we see Tolu Pifalata with one of his uh, trademark carries. Salupe or Chobi to his mix. Doesn't mind either. I think Nick uses Salupe more for historical purposes, so it gets his name saved. Same with Willie Sihalaholo. Known as Willis, not just to his mates, but to anybody on the street, but just wants for heritage purposes to keep the name. Anyway, Mason Grady, wow, ghosts past one defender, chip kick. Uh, he was stopped in his tracks after the tackle, but the Cardiff chase is good, and now they throw the sail players over the far touchline. It's a little melee building, but it's stopped. And Grady, well, he's raw, we know that. But it's that old cliche. He's big, he's strong, and he's fast, and that was some fen. Yeah, from as, him. as this game goes on and on, you can just see the Clewellyn and and Grady just, just come out of their shell more and more. Um, and that just showed what that play there as we see a, a maul you know, on the 30 meter line. The Cardiff being able to, to keep it nice and tight. James Botham, two tries against Zebra last weekend. Probably a draw between him and Curry in that contact. Pump, double pump from Jared Evans to Owen Lane. Uh, Good work by Carpenter to try to get the turnover and Reese Priestland just dived into the rack area and penalty given. Yeah, these these are these are the new rules that they've that the IRB have brought in. The Luke Ramos has called Owen Lane for that extra I guess that extra turn, that extra spin, but you could buy yourself a second or two for your supporters to come through and clean out. And uh, I, I saw that straight away, so you know something that the boys need to get onto. You know, both sides that these new rules have coming into play. So, old habits die hard, but they need to uh, they need to be able to, to adapt. Ake van der Merwe, score of sales, solitary try. Josh Adams with two, and Domachowski for Cardiff. It's a 15-point margin. Seven minutes played the second half. Johnny Hill, van der Merwe peels off that maul again. He's over the 10-yard line. Such acceleration by the hooker. Manu Tuilangi probably being the quietest player on the field this evening. McIntyre is on the loose head. Here's Dan Dupria, tackled by his opposite number to Lupe Falatau. Jim both of them just falls on the wrong side of the ball and slows play down a little bit. Tom Flati, formerly of Exeter, played a couple of games for the Ospreys back in the day as well. Sale, the Dupria twins combining on the edge. James Botham looking for the turnover. Josh Turnbull gets the turnover. Now Cardiff are dangerous in their own half. Teddy Williams, Priestland, Turnbull, Grady, man and ball. And he still rolls at the tackle, rides the tackle. He's a big, strong man, is Mason Grady. And Cardiff now have plenty of attacking options. Priestland, Jared Evans in the backfield, tackled. Ball bounces back straight into the hands of Dan Dupria. Gets it away to McIntyre. Sailor five metres out, turned over. And now Cardiff will go, surely not coast to coast. Jared Evans, Owen Lane. 
Thomas Williams and he's over the touchline and there's some enterprise and Thomas Williams getting involved with Gus Waugh's opposite number and he picked him up and threw it onto the floor and Waugh's still on the floor receiving treatment and Nick Williams shakes his head but Thomas Williams could be in a bit of trouble here yeah oh as we see Luke Wall must give the penalty to Cardiff I thought he was actually gonna he was gonna award sale you know with a bit of foul play there uh, I think he may well turn this call as well because there's no need for Thomas Williams balls over the touch he's picked more up and thrown him onto the floor and he's getting some treatment on his neck as well so we'll keep an eye on him the youngs from half in the meantime Priestland goes for another long ranger takes it up to the 22 no he's not I don't think Luke Ramos is gonna, is gonna check that the referee will um, have a strong feeling if if, uh, if if Gus Wall was on the field you know they would have had to stop the play which would have made him look at the screen but uh, to Cardiff's uh, credits you know they managed to, to, to withhold that driving more Liam Belcher slightly isolated here and Van der Merwe knows this and he's lying on the ball and he gets a dig into his kidneys from Jim Botham but Van der Merwe done his job well there he's wrapped up the ball envelope style got his back in the way and it's a scrum to say five sports extra 25 10 the score here as mentioned next weekend Lyon will travel to Toulon Scarlet at home to Clermont the Lions on the road to Glasgow both boost Tyson's come back off the field Seanard returns imagine that if you're the Lions having just beaten Rassing at home march in South Africa and then you've got to go to Glasgow the following week where he had no idea where you're going to go I suppose Glasgow's not bad in March it was, it was, quite, it was quite similar to, to Harlequins last week they were here playing at about 5-6 degrees and then this week they were in Cape Town playing in 26-27 degrees so you know it's uh speaking to the Bulls coaches a couple of weeks ago they just couldn't get their heads round anyway Dupree is off and away peels out the scrum he's made 40 meters and then crashes into Owen Lane who hangs on to his ankles numerical advantage here for sale Dupree gets it away on the far side Roebuck sale didn't do that well with the man advantage here uh, they're a little bit labored in attack they're still coming and that's a very very loose pass from Carpenter well, Flatty's forced to tidy and rolls out of James Botham's tackle some tired bodies out there and that's unsurprising considering the pace this game's been played at back to a pass from McIntyre to Priya floats it out to Roebuck Roebuck approaching Cardiff's 22 51 minutes played Cardiff with a comfortable lead to Priya bouncing out of one tackle James Botham nudged to the ground and he's shaky getting it back up to his feet Manu Tuilangi rare glimpse of action from him tackled by Toby Falata who knows him well John Ross with a carry big South Africans making an impact dummy runners McIntyre this is the best period of play and Roebuck with a third opportunity and this time he takes full advantage Cardiff defenders like statues Roebuck cuts back inside Reese Priestland flat, flat footed and Sale are not out of this one yet 51 minutes played at the Arms Park yeah def definitely not definitely not you know you can see the you know the, the, the big carries here from from Ben Curry from from the Dupier brothers you know just getting over the advantage line you know not not giving Cardiff time to to I guess to come around the ruck to reset on the D and uh, Rob uh, Tom Roebuck just just running a great line there 
off uh, Rob Dupree and just making it, like you said, making the Cardiff boys look like statues. So it's amazing just, just how simple and effective the, the sales game plan is. Just being able to, I guess, get, getting those little one percenters right and just making it look so easy. And with Roebuck getting over the uh, over the line underneath the post with a seven-pointer there. You know, goes and changes the scoreline in an instant. Rafi Quirk comes on. Not a bad little substitute. You've got to see the wall. Go back on his feet and he's okay. Being Reese Priest in the age, he doesn't need to impress anybody. But um, when it comes to video analysis or even perception, doesn't necessarily do himself much justice by standing still once he's been beaten. Just highlights the fact that he's been outfoxed. Quirk, first touch. England International. Back to George Ford. Priestland. He went for the spiral bomb and yet he got it and those are so difficult to handle. And Carpenter and Ford between them had to le let the ball bounce. And Carpenter with a loose kick. It's a big game for Cardiff and Reese Priestland. Those spiral bombs, can you just explain what they are? Nick? No, you can't. Because those <laughs> eyes tell me that you have no idea what I'm talking about. Number former number eight, Mike William. I tell you, you know, he's having an amazing game tonight as, as Priestel, and he's just he's just running the ship, and that's what experience buys. You know, you just you know, he's, everything that he's touched. You know, I know they say make your own luck, but he chased he chased that spiral bomb. You know, and Carpenter, you know, shanked it on the side, and now Cardiff ever. Have a line out inside the, the sale 22. So um, oh, he's he's really put his hand up tonight, and, and the old head is standing out. 36 now, Reese Priest then. Uncertain future. Will he retire? Will he fight one more season? Oh, Max Lowell in, dropped the ball, slipped down, and then crashed in to one of the sale players, and he's taken a big knock to his head. And I hope he's okay. That looked really nasty. I don't think it was anything intentional. Yeah, he's so literally lost. I, I, I think so. He was just. I think he was falling down and and probably went into somebody's knee. As we see Reese Carre and, and Dylan Lewis and, and Christian Dacey come on to you know, to replace the three Magic boys of the first half and Kieran Azarati, Corey Domachowski and Liam Belcher who had uh, oh, an absolute big influence. As we see a standing innovation, standing innovation for Domachowski. Azarati from Belcher. Now bear in mind, none of these boys have played international rugby. Arguably, third choice at the start of the season. Yeah, you, you know, you they struggle to, to, to try and get on the bench in the beginning of the season as Liam Belcher gets a standing ovation as well. And thoroughly deserved for these young boys. You know, they knew that uh, it was make or break for them tonight. And, um, I can probably probably say they, they definitely made the most of the opportunities tonight. Yeah, so many of these players at Cardiff. Uncertain futures. Contracts have been offered to some individuals. Some will have to take significant pay cuts. But it's no understatement to say that these players are playing for their futures. 54 minutes. Five Sports Extra. Sale. 17 Cardiff 25 in the European Challenge Cup knockout phase final 16 scrum on their own 22 interesting setup for sale here because they've loaded one side of the field back line wise Manu Lang, he looks poised like he's about to do something Quirk, Ford, this time it's Ford who goes for the up and under, kicks to compete, gets it away, a Priestland, he's forced to scramble and Ben Curry wants to get a turnover, he got his hands in there and slowed possession down, James Botham, Cardiff ball, Thomas Williams, Owen Lane, 
Nick Williams had spotted there was huge gaps in the backfield which Williams ignored and now Sailor readjusted Jared Evans cross field Josh Adams chase taken gathered and away comes Sail to James knocked on interesting period there that last five six minutes you know teams are they're kind of playing between the tens you know and, and almost forcing trying, trying to force someone one of the team one sorry one of each other to, to make a bit of a mistake um probably trying to toss the coin and hoping for someone for for an unforced error so it's uh you know, it makes for an interesting watch for the last the last quarter Cardiff 25, Sale 17. Five Sports Extra, BBC World Sport at the Arms Park in the Peter Thomas South Stand. Cardiff lost its benefactor this week, 79 years of age. Very fitting tribute pay pre match. Nick Williams, my guest alongside me played part in that tribute and he certainly would have enjoyed large periods of this match as he did last Friday when Cardiff won in Zebra this match is not over eight points the sale have displayed their intent and their ability to score at will if they want to yeah I, I think at will just showed that that last try that that Roebuck scored that when sale are on you know they're on you know, very very effective you know they get their big boys to get over the advantage line you know, which uh, gives Cardiff no time to fold their D and you know it just gets shorter and shorter and and Roebuck just just cut through uh, the, the defensive line and, and, and like we said and they made Priestland look like a statue uh, but th that just showed that you know any time of the game they'll be able to switch on and and when they switch on they uh, they're, they're really really on so uh, Cardiff got to be aware especially going into like I said quite a delicate time you know these next 10 minutes will be be massive for both teams Sale of course arguably a bigger fish to fry second in the Gallagher Premiership Cardiff could still technically make the last eight in the United Rugby Championship but it's a big ask with home games for the South African franchises in the final two rounds Sale, 11 points of Saracens the top of the tree but they've got four sticks here Yeah, as, as we see George Ford line up the sticks here, you know, the first scrum penalty against Cardiff tonight. And uh, don't want to point out the obvious, but, you know, with, with Azarati and Domachowski and Belcher gone off, you know, that dominance has probably, or has gone. And it's uh, interesting again because, you know, the, the internationals that are in Kyrie and Dylan Lewis and Christian Dacey, you know, you thought they would have been able to press that pressure on, but, um, you know, they seem to have failed from that point of view. George Ford. Penalty successful. Sale now within five. And we are getting close to the final quarter. You get a cold, my dear. Nick Williams, the cold is on. To Priya with a restart yeah, I've been up here 15 years God, I'm still trying to climatise mate Nick you you lived in Munster <laughs> from New Zealand you've spent most of your life in New Zealand which is hardly tropical <laughs> but that is a thick coat you've got on I had to bring it out of the vault because <laughs> I never know that, that like, like we spoke about that the wind off the tap you know really gets to your bones so I thought I'd play it safe tonight 
So I'm happy I had to brush the cobwebs off for this puppy. A bit of a momentum shift in the match. Cardiff conceded another penalty on the halfway line. And Ford will try and pin them back into their own corner. Didn't have much of an angle. And much to his annoyance, the assistant referee who planted himself in Cardiff's 22 raises his flag and runs 12 15 meters up towards the 10 yard line so attacking line out Dan Dupria gets hit advantage coming Cardiff are conceding penalties that's the third on the bounce now Rafi Quirk waits gives it a forward and there's a pragmatic feel to sail style of play right now uh, yeah, that's, this is this is what I was speaking about a couple of minutes ago. This next, you know, five, six, seven minutes is going to be uh, going to be vital, and and this is where your, your experienced players come into play. And, and George Ford has definitely put his hands up, his hand up, and, and and bossed the big boys around as he puts another punt in. I think it's a bit closer this time, you know, maybe maybe 10, 10 meters out from the the Cardiff try line, but there is a bit of a ten, and you can feel there's a bit of a, a shift in momentum, you know, for sale. As we hear the crowd try and get behind the, the Cardiff boys. Ewan Ashman moves on. The Scotland International gets it out to Manu Tuilangi. Ford to Priya. Rhys Leonard spotted him and flew up defensively. And he needed to get that one right. And his spot check defence worked. But another penalty against Cardiff. This time at mall time and sale may well go again here yeah Cardiff and Finch there not waiting for the for the jumper to hit the ground I think Josh Turnbull put his hand up and, and said to Luke Ramos that it was I that, that, that did it but in rugby and especially at these times of pressure it's important that you don't compound a negative on a, on a negative you know and Cardiff had it three in a row as we see sale you know in the five meter line and I'm sure they're gonna try and maul it over front ball sale second in the Gallagher Premiership driving malls set piece bread and butter stuff they are close they are over the line but there's a second shove from Cardiff that stops them for the time being on the far touch line five points down sale 18 minutes left of this match Dupria Dan Dupria he somehow stopped pick and go from the forwards Strong defence from Cardiff so far. Shrill of the referee's whistle. Everyone pauses and waits to see what he's coming up with. And I think he's going upstairs to the TMO. Yeah, I think Sale have... I see a few hands getting raised. I think they think they've scored. I'm not sure who actually uh, managed to get over the line. But Luke Wamas says that uh, has put up the, the, the square as in going to the to the AR uh, we'll see we'll have a, a better look so, you know uh, you notice we spent most of this game looking towards the far screen and there's one far closer to us to our right hand side we keep forgetting about that well despite the screen being closer to us it's not conclusive in any way and what I would say is the silence around the arms park probably hints to the fact that we may see a try here because there's there we go the ball is picked up by Ashman a couple of things is he offside because he has to pick the ball mm. from behind his feet secondly does he get it down so Patrick Delac is the TMO he converses with Ramos and we are waiting for his call sale players think they've scored a try they're all back in their own half Delac and Ramos still chatting it's all down I guess Nick to the question asked whether or not if he decided it was a try is he looking for evidence that it was or wasn't 
I don't think they have a, a clear picture on the ball getting to ground. And I think that may be the question he's, he's, he's asking. Oh, sorry, no. Try given. The two same supporters stood right in front of us, leap into the air in delight. And the, Rami, the rest of the South Stand are pretty despondent by that decision. But try is given, and Josh Bowman is about to come on for sale. As we see George Ford lining up the conversion, I think it's it's one of the Dupree boys uh, going off with what looks like a an elbow injury of some sort, and you can tell it's serious because uh, you know he's got the old uh, he's got the epipen. Yeah. Well, you know the I guess people say the laughing gas to his mouth. So Stander Priya. Yeah. And he looks in pretty bad shape, doesn't yeah. he? We all know how tough a man he is. So for him to to go through that, and we only wish him the best, and I uh, hope it's not as bad as initially thought. Conversion is good from George Ford and Sale for the first time in more than half an hour are in the lead and we're into the final 15 minutes Cardiff 25 sale 27 yeah, it'll be very interesting now how Cardiff respond to this um, like I said numerous occasions you know that, that 10 minutes just gone there was a, a very vital part of the game and and George Ford with all the experience that he has uh, just you know just took it took the balls by the horn there and, and got his boys back back in the lead for the first time of the game well, 17 points to 3 the score since turning Cardiff needs some inspiration one thing you can say about this side is they will play and they can score tries James Ratty, Seth Davis on for Teddy Williams and Josh Turnbull Great, great shift there again as, as we hear the crowd. You know, a few standing ovation for the old dog that is uh, Josh Turnbull and his compatriot that is Teddy Williams. Not a bad shift from the young fellow as well. So uh, let's hope Seb Davis and and the, and the other likes can, can do them justice. Another error by Cardiff. Free kick at line time and Josh Ford marches up and barks at his players to spread across the field and this one is going up high Gary Owen style and that one does just that Priestland is there calls for the mark and it could go quickly here because Sale are pretty scattered but Priestland has been kicking like a horse today and he puts a big one in there not the best of passes to Roebuck that's a good kick by him back to Priestland that's the ugliest connection he's put onto the ball all night and it could be on for George Ford but he instead goes for another hanger that's a good kick and this could go anywhere in fact it goes straight to the hands of Thomas Williams who offloads to Christian Dacey Cardiff down by two Fallot out Jared Evans loose pass they need to be careful here and it was knocked on by Thomas Young and Jared Evans is furious with his back line but Cardiff that high risk deep attack play forcing defenders to make decisions defensively when it comes off is great but when it doesn't it creates problems yeah look, it's an age-old saying high risk high reward you know but uh, like you said Jared is is fuming at us at the outside backs they probably should have held their feet a wee bit more um, what what was sticking in the first I guess 55 minutes isn't really sticking now and and credit to, to sale you know instead of shooting one two out of the line the, the, their whole back line or whoever was in the D line will come out as, as a group so they're collectively been putting pressure on the on the Cardiff boys and and uh, I guess forcing that turnover and the momentum you can just feel it in the air has definitely changed you know to in the way of the the boys from up north is 
As we see, uh, as we see Ben Thomas come on for for Mexico Wellen, who's had a great shift as well. Um, well, this will change Cardiff's output. As ben Thomas is more of a baller than Thoellen. Good kicking game, good distribution. But his first task, to my eyes, will be to tackle Manu Tuolangi, who has hands on hips and is standing flattest of anybody right by this scrum. So scrum on Cardiff's 10-yard line. This time it's Cardiff going back, but then there's a counter shove from them. It's Cardiff front row that gets the penalty, and Thomas Williams hints that he's going to take it quickly, but sensibly he changes his mind and waits for Priestland to bang his side down in towards Sales 22. 12 minutes left of this match, it's a two-pointer. The visitors are in the lead. I think we're set for a grandstand finish at the Arms Park and Priestland has put another banger in. Yeah, great wise. Great kick, great kick there from Rhys Priestland. You can see that he went all for nothing there. You know, Flaherty tried to bring the ball in, but now the you know, Cardiff are 10 metres out. You know, they're going for the short five-man line-out. You know, whether they moor this, which is almost uh, possible. Thomas Young at half. James Ratti takes the ball, claims to the referee that Sale are all round him from the wrong part. Thomas Young picks, goes. I'm not sure if he went down on his knees there. Dylan Lewis into a big bunch of sail forwards. Cardiff five metres short. Dummy runner was Reese Carey. Fallot out. He's driven back in the tackle. Sail bordering on offside, but it's good according to the referee. Grady again into more traffic. Switch of direction. Jared Evans calls it. Ben Thomas swallowed by two sail defenders. Good defensive set from the visitors so far. James Ratti. They're tackling in twos at uh, the English side. Jared Evans, dummies, then bounces out of the tackle. Still Cardiff ball. Ten minutes left of this game. Yeah, it's important that Jared, Jared controls, Jared Evans controls his forwards here. It looks a bit uh, skitters and scatters. Yeah, as we see Talupe Falatel take it up. No shape at the minute to Cardiff's attack. Seb Davis. They're still in sales 22, into the final 10 minutes. Mason Grady back inside, picked off, carried, then it's taken by Ben Thomas. Cardiff still have possession. Ballot out, gets it away. Christian Dacey, dummy runners, Reese Carey. Phase after phase from Cardiff. Seb Davis, he gets over the gain line. Jared Evans gets in to do the wrecking. There's a sail hand there. Ben Curry's been penalised. Thomas Williams. Good angle from Priestler. Oh, he couldn't get it away. It was try time if he had. And it's a penalty for Cardiff. And with nine and a half minutes left, you're up by two. You go you go for the points, yeah, do you know? It's, it's, it's a no-brainer, especially when you're right in front of the post here. But like we alluded to, it. Cardiff were inside the, the what they call the green zone, which is inside the opposition's 22. Uh, there seemed to be a bit of confusion as to as to what kind of pattern they were in ones and twos, and that's where Jared Evans needs to put his hand up and control the fatties. You know, we had Rhys Kare running running lines and and not knowing if he was going to get the ball or not. So times like this, you probably need you know someone like Rhys Priestland as well to to come through and and let his old head control the big boys up front but uh, nonetheless the boys got sorry the Cardiff boys got uh, you know an opportunity to get in front by one point to receive Jared Evans uh, which hopefully he puts over the the black dot Jared Evans will not get an easier penalty and Cardiff former champions of this competition have a one point lead we have, we have eight minutes just gonna gather my voice. We have eight minutes left of this match. It's been, it's been some match as well. 
you know, and credit to Sale coming back and, and making get, getting in front for the last 10 minutes has made it even more better for, for the watching as, as Salupe Palatel probably carries for the 100th time of the match. You know, we're going into, uh, obviously, the last eight minutes of, of this game tonight, so uh, it's an absolute nail-biter it is. Cardiff in the lead by one point. A very loose pass to Priestland and Thomas Williams. Thankfully, there was no chase. Carpenter, George Ford tells him this one's going up into the air and Priestland who must be close to man of the match this evening. Plenty of contenders and Priestland gets the ball and then keeps possession and now what about the game management here from Cardiff? Yeah. Charlie Ever's got to offer crossfield kick and um, that's out on the full and Jared Evans screams and looks up to the Cardiff I darkness and then hits his own head and says what was I doing and that could be a very costly error because it's a line out for sale just outside Cardiff's 22 yeah, a bit very costly there as we as we see O'Flaherty, you know, getting getting subbed off for Aaron Reed. I, I could see what, what Jared Evans was trying to do to put that contestable kick up, but the the execution uh, wasn't there unfortunately. Again, it's times like this where you need you almost need your old heads to put their hands up. You know, uh, Reese Priestland has had he's a cracker of a game. Maybe he needs to have a word to Jared Evans. Jared Evans to just to, to calm down as we hear the crowd sing out in, a, in a, an amazing Welsh hymn. Games and Allen, have a this, sir. Well, we've touched upon this on a number of occasions tonight. 10,500 here. Celebration of Peter Thomas, a former life president of Cardiff, who passed away sadly this week. A man who has kept this club afloat for two decades and more. Yeah, you can you can definitely say that again, guys. He's, uh, you know, for myself as an outsider, um, the way he welcomed, you know, not only my family but you know all the other boys that have come without, you know, outside of Wales. You know, he's just an absolute top man and, and a true loss, you know, to Cardiff Rugby. But, you know, in patches, you can see the boys are playing with, with, with Peter on on their sleeves. So let's hope they can uh, pay him back in the, in the next six minutes. Chuilangi runs through a Jared Evans tackle. And Evans did enough to stop his momentum. Oh, some dog leg defence there from Cardiff. And Sale will go straight and direct through Simon McIntyre. Cardiff seem to have only 12 or 13 defenders because they're looking weak defensively. But Sale over complicate and Aaron Reid drops the ball and this is Cardiff scrub. And now Roebuck and Priestland are having words. You know Priest is very quick to get his, get his way out of there. Handbags, handbags they say. It. Handbags. Well, the way that I think with the scrum here, and probably Sale probably have had the upper hand with the scrum. Uh, they, they won't be, they'll be backing themselves to, to possibly go for a, a strong push here. But with the likes of Dylan Lewis and, and Reese Kyrie and, and Christian Dacey. This is a it, tricky defensive scrum. Yeah. Card, they can't you know, if they have possession, but they're three or four metres in and 15 metres from their own trial line. Five and a half minutes left of this match. It's a one-point game. Cardiff 28, Sale 27. Sale got the first try and then Cardiff raced in to a lead with three consecutive tries, two of them for Josh Adams at halftime it was 22-10. And it's been mostly the visitors since turning. But a penalty by Jared Evans in the final 10 minutes has nudged his side back into the lead 28-27 winners to face Benetton next week in the quarters Squeeze is going to come on Cardiff scrum here free kick 
and it wouldn't surprise me if Sale now go for a scrum themselves. But Rafi Quirk's going to take it. Tap and go. Manu Tuilangi, who's found second wind. Johnny Hill, dummies, goes himself. 10 metres out, a sail now. Not the best of passes, but Dupriya still carries. Still they go round the corner. Ben Curry dragged down. Cardiff need to be sound defensively. Sale know that a try here could win it. A penalty, a drop goal would put them back into the lead. Tuolangi. Both thumbs there on the ball. Both of them gets the penalty. And hundreds of supporters all around us in the South Sam jump into the air in delight. What a crucial penalty that could be. And it was James Botham who got down, clamped on onto the ball and got the penalty. I'm not sure you were supporting his weight though, Nick. Yeah, I looked, I looked I was actually on the on the on the wire there because it didn't look like he was supporting his <laughs> weight there. So it's a great work from, from the young open side. You know, in a sense, Manu Tulangi being so strong, he gets he almost goes too far. Yeah, yeah, he gets, gets over the game. Yeah, he gets yeah. over it too much that his support players are left too far behind. But James Botham seeing the uh, the opportunity to get in the jackal. And again, with, with Luke Ramos, yeah, it could have gone either way, I feel. Uh, but for Cardiff's sake, it's definitely gone for them. Game management. Execution. Clutch is the American term. Does Sale have it? And do the Cardiff players have the composure to get this over the line? Driving ball into Sale's half. They wouldn't need to complicate things. There's a penalty advantage for them. They've been turned over by Ben Curry. But back will go, it was John Ross actually. So, another long advantage for Cardiff. Yeah. But Ramos comes back. Two minutes, 20 seconds left for this game. Cardiff can surely finish this one off now. Priestland will go to the corner. And it's a long, long way then for Sale to get back into the game. Great kick there from Rhys Priestland. Uh, he's put Cardiff in prime position, 10 metres out. And again, like what you said, Gar, with game management, you know, whether they had to maul it or have a break off. And it's important that they stay down this side for the next one and a half minutes if they want to go in. It's and, a one and win point game. game. Mm. A one point game. Reese Carey whispers into Christian Dacey's ear, tells him what the call is. Stolen, but straight into the hands of Dacey. Bowman got his hand onto the ball. But Daisy was aware and awake. Now we'll be looking at the clock and it tells you there's a minute 20 left of the game. And Cardiff are exactly where they want to be. 15 metres in from the touchline, 15 metres away from the try line. Low risk rugby surely. James Ratty carries. Ben Curry tries to get the turnover. Ben Curry gets the turnover. turnover. Uh oh, here we go. To Ilangi. They've got to go 99 metres. Carpenter, Sale, this would be a dramatic finale to this match, clock tells you there are 50 seconds left, another carry from the visitors, Ford, back inside, uh, it's going to be a tough, tough way for them to come, McIntyre, Ford, they do have numbers this time. Straight into the hands of Tuilangi. Tuilangi tackled by Mason Grady on the far touchline. Now they're out of their 22. This will be the final play. 20 seconds left on the clock. Sale would like a penalty, surely. But they need to ke keep possession. Ford. Big, big carry from Dupria. Still is taken by Quirk. Floated out to Reed. Sale looking to go all the way. Christian Dacey has his hands on the ball. Referee says penalty. This will be it. Game over.
Chase both who gets possession. Get it off the field, say the supporters. Thomas Young agrees. Thomas Young, Owen Lane, scream towards the south stand. A result that Peter Thomas would have been proud of. Cardiff have got the victory against Sail Sharks. It was nip and tuck the whole way. But a victory and quarter final time for Dai Young's men. Bennett on next. Cardiff 28, Sail Sharks 27. Yeah, great, great, great way to finish that game there. You know, what a, what a game for both teams. Sale came down to play, they did that for sure. But Cardiff coming out and, and with Peter Thomas in memory, you know, they, they threw everything and the kitchen sink at the Sale team and, and to their full credit, have come away with a one-point win and therefore go to uh, go to Italy to play Benetton in, uh, in a high-class quarter-final. We enjoyed the game. Say, certainly played their part, didn't they, Nick? Yeah, big time. They they they, they played that couple of purple patches there. You know, the Dupree boys showed what they could do. Manu Zulangi came out later in the game, you know, and they, they came back from 17-3 down to, to almost to almost taking that game away from Cardiff. But fair play to Cardiff, you know, coming through game management in that last five minutes probably got them over the line. Thank you so much for your company. Thank you. And thank you for listening. And that's it then. That's Josh Turnbull. Pumps his hands into the air in delight. His side have won. Final score here. Cardiff 28. Sale 27.